All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Ainava, and I'm the extension entomologist. Working on peanuts, I also work on vegetables. Uh, and uh, you know, both these crops use a lot of insecticides, a lot of insect issues, um, especially on peanuts. Um, what I'm going to present today is going to be some updates on the peanut IPM guide, because I think that's important to get you to know at this point, early in the season. And, uh, and then how I uh, show you some slides on how, as, as the season progresses, what's going to happen. And then um, talk, talk about trips. So that's probably the first insect you'll see out there. Uh, but my uh, cell phone number is there along with my email. My phone is always on. Please, please um, call anytime you need to have a question. My website is there 24 seven. And there's also a peanut IPM on Facebook. So if you, I have increasingly been answering questions on, on Facebook. So uh, I'm very active social on social media. So there's many ways you can reach me. Uh, some update about insect control, uh, especially the IPM guide. Uh, I think by now you're familiar with our, the PDF version, which is uh, almost 17 pages long with insect cell listing. But if you want something that li uh, lives in your truck and easy to look at, um, ask your extension agent to get, get you a slide chart. Um, and I've given you a picture of the slide chart there, and that's a very handy tool. In fact, I'm sitting in my room with a slide chart in my hand, so I keep it really, really handy, um, and I make all kinds of notes on it. Uh, by the way, this uh, slide chart was uh, made successful by grants from the Alabama Peanut Producer Association and the National Peanut Board grants, and we're gonna redo these uh, probably towards the end of this year with some new funding. Uh, that we have already got. So thanks to, to them. Um, some updates on the pages. Uh, one thing I did this time is put that scouting calendar in the IPM guide. Uh, it used to be in a separate publication, but because this is the one that I use all the time uh, for reference and probably uh, other producers too. So we have the peanut scouting calendar right there. And as you can see, uh, the first insect that you probably see out in the peanut uh, fields are the thrips. Uh, I will tell you before I forget that you do see some, um, as the peanuts start to grow and the canopy starts to, to become thicker, um, you see a lot more uh, migration of beneficial insects. I know we don't talk enough about beneficial insects, but once you kill them, you know what happens. So uh, just watch out along with thrips. Uh, when you're scouting for thrips, uh, watch out for those beneficials and, and see what they're doing. So uh, we need to protect them and not kill them all. Um, and then of course, uh, from trips, we go to the summer season, uh, May, June, July, when we see a pretty heavy activity of caterpillars. And we'll talk about some of the weather issues that happened last year. Um, and then if you look in the tables uh, in the publication, you will find more information on the, or about scouting, uh, some of the economic thresholds are there. And the whole thing is on the slide charts also, uh, along with a little picture, which is nice. Uh, just to give you a rapid update on some of the insecticides, especially the one that um, I have started to use in our research plots, and we do it in a way so we don't make the spider mites mad at us, especially with the drought here, like we saw last year. We uh, have to be very judicious in how we rotate insecticides. And I marked some of these chemistries that are now available uh, for, for a few years, and there's some that are new, but they are unique and different from pyrethroids. So you can now uh, space out your pyrethroids. Uh, one thing that's missing on this one, I took it off uh, because belt, uh, the insecticide, which is flubendamide, it's a kind of anti-feedant for caterpillars. It only acts on caterpillars, it's a great product, but EPA has canceled its registration. However, uh, according to my knowledge at this point, uh, you can still use the existing stocks, and, uh, but there is no more manufacturing of belt. And I think um, you may see the labels being taken down from the, the company websites also. So uh, just contact your uh, dealer, pesticide dealer, and make sure you check the label uh, for those products um, <clears throat> before you spray. Um, so I marked their radiant which is uh, actually has a pretty low rate of application on peanuts now. And it's a very good product as a foliar spray for thrips. Um, in case you miss the window for a soil application, which is a preventive, this is your therapeutic. 
and trips almost uh, flip over and die when they see the variant. Uh, it's very, very powerful chemistry. It may not protect you from the virus, um, but it, it is a, a, good, a good foliar spray for thrips. Um, and then I have marked the uh, insect growth regulators down there, Dimelin, Diamond, and Intrepid. Uh, Dimelin, Diamond, uh, you know, they prevent insect from molting. They upset the physiology of the insect. And again, the rates depend on the formulation. Uh, and they're very, uh, very good in residual. That's the other good thing we have seen. Almost 10 to 14 day residual, which you can't expect uh, with pyrethroids in a hot, dry summer like we, we did last year, which, you know, again, you have to be careful how you spray your pyrethroids. Uh, and then Intrepid Edge is a new formulation that is a premix. Uh, so that's another interesting thing happening in the peanut insect side world is we see these premixes become available. Uh, Besiege, another one down at the bottom, is also a premix. Uh, now, one of the things with premix is they're wonderful. They give you a broad spectrum of control. But if you don't have the insect, you may just go with a single product. So just be careful. You don't want to overuse these products and then deal with resistance issues. And, and resistance is a real problem in the peanut belt uh, where peanuts are grown. So we don't want that. So be very judicious with these products when you're using them. Uh, this is what happened last year. And this is just to show you the three locations, north, south, not north, central, and south Alabama. And you can see how the rainfall kind of uh, petered out after June, July. It was drastic and it was worse in the north uh, areas. And uh, um, it, it, it just depends where you are. Uh, but overall, we were way below normal. And in a drought year like that, my phone doesn't stop ringing because insects start to escalate. And to show you what happens when, when the drought hits, uh, the generation time, insects take less of the generation time and they rapidly multiply. For example, uh, just look at the army worms. Uh, they, they are always in the hay and pasture fields first. Uh, they, they love those hay and pasture fields and then they start moving into our crops. Uh, it could be peanuts, it could be vegetables and all hell break loose at that point. Um, and you can see the multiple generations you can detect almost with uh, these insects. Beet armyworms always seems to be moving first, which is kind of interesting with our monitoring system. Uh, we use pheromone traps and beet armyworms seems to be the first one to move from other fields into our, our peanut and vegetable fields. I, know, um, I can't, excuse me, but I can't quite make out what those uh, Things are on the x-axis. What are those? Which months are those? That you okay. Show? Yes, on the x-axis. Oh, yeah, those are from. You're looking at from May to September. Yeah, I apologize because this is. I made it from a software called Open Scout, and when I do thumbnails, it just destroys the pixel. Um, but it's from May to September, and right around June. So if you hover your eyes and you'll see right around June, July, when the rains stopped, everything just escalated, and it was it just became worse. And then on top, the plants are stressed. So there you have a perfect situation. Um, so, the, so really, I think uh, in a drought year, the treatments really work because the plants are stressed. They need help. But we need to be better at planning this so that we don't have other insects uh, flare up, flared up. And talking about some other issues that we do see worse with drought. And uh, that happened to be the two-spotted spider mite. Um, we had a tremendous problem last year uh, from peanuts to soybeans to cotton. Uh, anybody spraying pyrethroids, you give a few shots of pyrethroids, uh, hoping to control your caterpillars and give it about 10, 15 days, you start seeing um, real problems with spider mites. And these are some pictures of, from our research plots where we stress the peanuts. Um, it was hot anyway, and then we, we, we stressed them further with chemical sprays. And uh, once we did two shots of bifenthrin, and you can uh, read the descriptions there, in about 10, 15 days, we start seeing spider mites. And there are so many, they started to ball up at the end of the, those terminals. And your yield loss, just without anything else, no caterpillars, nothing, you can have almost 30% yield loss in peanuts and drought conditions. So watch out, uh, everybody, for this. Um, we don't want them. The other problem with in peanuts, is you only have one chemistry registered. Uh, comite is the only thing that's registered and, 
And we are looking for more options. And maybe during uh, mid-summer, we'll do another webinar just to update you on the spilomite situation. But for now, just watch out. This is the most common species of spilomites. But we also have another species that we found uh, incidentally in Bruton, uh, again, induced by sprays of pyrethroid. Uh, and I'm just calling it red spiromite because I don't know what the common name is. Um, but it's a, it's a different species. And uh, it has been a, a minor pest, uh, but it just flared up. We, we still don't know why it flared up at, at that location. So if you see anything unusual, uh, the point I'm trying to make is if you see anything unusual, take a picture. Remember your phone has a camera. Please take a picture, text it to, to us, to extension, to your extension agent or me, and we'd love to help you out and, and archive these pictures for, for warning, uh, using them for pest alerts. Talking about some of the sucking insect pests and kind of slowly coming to the topic of thrips. Um, thrips is one of the several sucking insect pests that we commonly see uh, in peanuts. Uh, we have not seen major outbreak of cowpea aphid and burrow buds last year, which was interesting because you would think that drought would induce uh, more uh, of a problem with these insects, but it didn't. Um, another interesting thing with these insects is as they become major pests towards the, towards the mid to end of the season, uh, like your alfalfa hoppers, cowpea aphids, burrow buds, and when it's really hot, it drives them into the canopy to feed. And that's where they become problematic. So um, just consult the IPM guide and call us if you have questions. Um, but again, thrips is probably the first insect you'll see out there. Once you have a good stand, of course, uh, if you have a good stand, uh, it becomes really easy for the migrating thrips to look and find, and they will soon colonize. Um, and there's two major species. Uh, there's the tobacco thrips and the Western flower thrips. They almost come together, uh, but the western flower thrips tends to hide in the flowers. Once the peanut starts to bloom, they really build up in large numbers in the flowers. Uh, but both of these can transmit uh, spotted wilt uh, in peanuts, so you have to watch out. Uh, but by far, tobacco thrips seems to be the, the, the big one uh, that comes early in the season. And of course, as I said, in a bad year, or if you don't have irrigation, your peanuts are looking stressful. It's a calling card for these thrips, and they will hammer those peanuts, uh, resulting in a major stand loss. So, um, and you'll see the stand loss when you see very poor looking leaves. Uh, just to show you, they, it's called possum ear. So uh, it's like almost dog eared, the, the, that leaf. It's just crumpled, um, and it can be very severe in a small plant. Um, and sometimes they, they grow out of it, but mo most of the time, if you're living in a heavy population of thrips in a place where it's, a, it's like an epidemic, you have to put down a soil insecticide as a preventive. Um, now again, the eggs are laid in the terminal bud. They really like it hot and dry, especially early in the season if they can get it. Uh, and they transmit uh, spotted wilt, although with the new varieties, that has reduced a lot. So that's a big savior. And, and probably the first line of defense is to have uh, resistant varieties. So again, uh, for thrips control, our, here's our recommendation, and this is based off my conversations with Dr. Austin Haken, who has been doing uh, um, uh, work on virus, uh, spotted milk virus and thrips for many years, along with University of Georgia. So I borrowed some information and, and put it together with my experiences. Again, when we talk about thrips, pest prevention is very important because there is almost no threshold. We just don't know because the virus pressure could be bad in, in, in some of the varieties. So again, first line of defense is use resistant varieties. Control weeds, very important to start out clean. Um, now seed treatments, I've done some studies and they don't seem to be working very well, at, at least at this point. So we are still dependent on products like Thymet, which is really good at reducing virus. That's probably one of the best products to reduce thrips under virus pressure. Uh, there are other products that can kill the thrips, but we don't see an effect on the virus oftentimes. Uh, but uh, Thymet is, is still a very good product. Um, we also have another product, which is a premix. As I said, premix are now in the market, and uh, very much so in the peanuts. 
uh, vellum total, which has imidacloprid in it, is actually a, a nematicide um, and an insecticide together. And it has imidacloprid in it, which has a very long residual. Once it goes into the plant, it's a systemic poison. And you have to apply it in furrow. Make sure you are not putting it over the seed. Put it under the seed. And, and as the seed germinates, it takes up the, the chemical and it stays inside. It has almost 30 day pre-harvest interval. Uh, so it has a really long residual. Uh, and that's a lot of poison in a small peanut plant. So it gives you that prolonged protection. So now we have an option uh, because thymate is really, really harsh chemistry. Um, for early season, vellum total is a good substitute, we believe. And again, uh, for labels do change. EPA has uh, made uh, like a bee label. Uh, there's a symbol of honeybee on these products. So make sure you read the label and check the label. Labels do change uh, from sometimes year to year. So uh, watch out and uh, follow the label. If you get into a situation where you, um, you couldn't put out the insecticide early in the season uh, soil, now you need some foliar. We have some products, uh, especially product like Radiant and uh, three fluid ounces. It's really, really low. It gives an excellent control on thrips. Um, the pictures up there show you, uh, the picture on the left show you the uh, number of uh, hits, virus hits, uh, in an untreated checks, almost five to six. But with Radiant, you can reduce it to almost one to two. Uh, so there is that benefit that we see in some years uh, when there's too much virus pressure, but it does get good, very good job on, on killing thrips. And we know that from our thrips counts. Um, <clears throat> we also have acephate, but some of these products are much more harsher. And when you try to spray these a little bit into the season, it cleans your field from all beneficial insects. And uh, sometimes that's not what I like to see. And, and, and uh, we can have some flare-ups of other problems. Um, and I also uh, saw a study um, or a, basically a blog article from Mississippi State uh, stating that you know, some of these, especially products like Orthene, when you use them at multiple sprays, uh, you see um, uh, a yield benefit uh, when there's an environmental or physiological stress on the plant. So basically, it helps to ease that peanut and let it grow uh, insect-free. So uh, again, you have to scout before and after. That's what we always recommend. That way you can reduce your, your number of applications. If you need more information, of course, we have the website. We have the peanut IPM guide, the slide chart, but we have um, a newsletter that you can subscribe. You can subscribe yourself by visiting the website that's on the screen. And uh, there's a, uh, on a navigation bar, you will see an email, place for email. Just put, put it there and click enter and you will start receiving our, our IPM newsletter, which is a great way to find out information about peanuts, also cotton and many other crops. So, uh, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email. Thank you very much.